super excited. We're excited to meet up with the crew and the team up there. Wanted to, uh, whenever we do work trips and, you know, do company stuff, we try to always, or one of our core values is family. And so I always try to participate, bring my family with me on things when I can, whenever we're traveling, because they're fun to have around. And so I can work during the day and then be with them and not be away from them for so long. So bring in the, the wife, and the daughter, Woo! and of course, our camp guy. So, <laughs> this is gonna be an awesome video. We're gonna learn a ton and ton of stuff about the Explore company and the manufacturing and how they do stuff. So, stay tuned. So we just got to Nelson Industries Explore and we're going to get a tour today from the owner and also one of his sales reps. Super excited about today to show the manufacturer and kind of bring you guys inside and behind the scenes. So let's go inside and meet the guys. Hey Steve, how's hey, it going? Isaac. Welcome to Nelson Industries. Hey, thanks. Good to see you. How are you guys doing? Great. Yourself, Isaac. Uh, introduce yourself for everybody that doesn't know you. I'm Steve. Isaac Nelson. We're gonna get a walk around today and gonna showcase there, gonna show us around and teach us some of the behind the scenes stuff and hopefully educate us on this trailer. I did come by yesterday and we kind of got a private tour and today we wanna show you guys some more stuff, but really excited to be here and showcase how awesome this company is. I talk about it all the time, so. Welcome. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Well, should we get started? Yes, let's go. Cool. Hey, look, we got some C channels here. Yep. What are these ones? Is that the, what are the th big ones for? The two by four, is that so two that's, by four ish? Those are, you can see the big piece where the wheel well goes. Oh, okay. So oh, that yeah. chunk and then over the ramp door and over the entry door. Just kind of okay. like headers. You okay. Know, a like, little more beefed up in those areas. Okay, that makes sense. So that's where we use those. Everything else is a smaller <laughs> tubing like you see around. We got most of us outside. <laughs> oh yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. So we show gotta bring outside. a lot in. So the, what's the construction material made of in the trailer? Like the walls and the floor and everything. So yeah, the walls and our ceiling, the the roof structure, the superstructure is all aluminum. Okay. We use O62 thickness aluminum, which is a little higher than the industry standard. Again. The industry standards probably 045, 050. Okay. So it's a little bit th th thicker. You said than this is 0, the what did you say? 0, 062. 062. So it's yep. a little bit thicker. And there's some areas where we use thicker yet. You know, yeah. our main top rails are in the in the ceiling, that's uh, over an eighth inch thick. And critical structural areas we use thicker okay. gauge aluminum. But for weight reduction, where we can, we'll use 062. So it's all welded. Welded all fully aluminum. welded. Everything's welded. Okay. Um, you can see where we grind, clean up these surfaces. These are the areas that we'll be bonding to, gluing the interior panel, gluing the fiberglass on. Yeah. Another thing too, we create this L shape. You'll see when we assemble the, the walls onto the chassis, that way our walls do not sit on the floor. Our walls will actually set right on the frame. And so that way, unlike a lot of campers where their walls are bolted to the floor, we go directly to the frame and the floor sets inside of the walls so that we get a better positive connection. Well, and then we'll sense. actually through bolt every 16 inches or so with a 3 8 inch thick bolt. Okay. And so it's a very strong connection. It makes the frame stronger, keeps any flex. So most trailers, I'm imagining if you put them directly on the floor and your floor is plywood, yes. you're bolting through plywood to yep. the frame. Exactly. And you, you get expansion, contraction, expansion. the floor could rot because it's plywood. There's yeah. a lot of negatives there. Okay, so, so you put you put the metal the directly, to, right directly to the steel. Yes. The, the chassis is steel, right? Correct. 
Yep. Now we have a we have you have a chassis outside, don't yes. you? That you could show us. Yep. I saw some coming in on the truck. Earlier. Yeah, he's probably he might be bringing them in here. Shortly. Oh, really? What kind of bolts? You said three eight eight yep. inch. The lengths are. I want to say they're six inch long bolts. Okay. And they bolt directly into the steel chassis. Okay. Every between every stud bay. Okay. Around the entire perimeter of the trailer. So you're actually bolting, not like just screwing. Correct. To yep. the chassis. Those are actual bolts. That's that's pretty incredible. You were explaining to me yesterday the difference is because the way you build the walls in Indiana or some of the other trailers in the industry, they they actually like send it through like a lamination, right? Yep. So they'll build a frame similar like this. A lot of them in the industry, they they instead of welding, they might screw them together. Okay. Um, or they weld one side, or more or less tack weld them. Okay. And they're relying on the lamination process to really hold everything together. And so what they do is they'll they'll put like maybe if you're lucky a little foam board insulation in between, yep. lower density, and then they put a thin piece of thin like piece of lou on, real like 16 inch thick. Yeah. Which is very very thin. Yeah, and like they'll a credit glue card that almost. directly to the the foam and the framing. And then they send it through like a lot of times a, a pinch roller that'll squeeze it all together or a vacuum bag, vacuum press okay. that, that pinches it all together. Okay. Um, it is a lightweight, fast, economical method to build a wall. Yeah. Definitely not as strong as this method. Now, the types of fiberglass or lamination that they use, mm -hmm. what's, a, what's kind of standard? The industry standard in travel trailers is an FRP, the fiberglass reinforced plastic that they then will glue to a real thin luon yeah. wood, kind of like a real thin plywood substrate. Yeah. And that's glued together, then glued to the frame. Okay. And so that's your, that's how they'll create their sidewall. So you're gonna get like a thin piece of almost like luon wood with laminate fiberglass plastic. Yep. And it's like, I mean, we're talking a little bit thicker than a credit card almost. Correct. Yeah. Like very, very thin. And then paneling on the other side and that's it. And that's it. And they're usually a very thin interior paneling. They can get away with the real thin materials because the foam board in between is what it's also bonded to. Yeah. So it might look and feel like it's a solid wall, but like you said, it's, it might be a credit card thickness. Yeah. So, you know, lightweight, but not strong. Yeah, lightweight, but not strong. So then they send it through it and throw it on the walls. And how, how would, how do you, I'm imagining in my head if you, Send it through a lamination. How do you then drill holes and lag bolts mm, into the frame? You can't. That's the downside. And so they might attach it from the underside, depending on the the trailer manufacturer, or they'll run their siding past their bottom plate, and then they'll just basically attach via through that FRP with that luon. That okay. might be the only attachment of yeah. the walls to the chassis, yeah, or the walls to the floor, depending on that type of trailer. And then what type of grade bolts are you using when you attach these to the frame? They're a galvanized grade five bolt. Okay, galvanized grade five, about yep. six inches lag yep. through it's the steel. A, it's a regular threaded bolt. Okay. Yep. And they're threaded holes into the chassis. And the chassis is quarter inch thick steel, so extremely strong. So yeah. it holds the... That's yep. pretty, that's pretty. And in addition to that, you'll see we also use our, our adhesive as well. So okay. we the, the bolts and the adhesive combined, Yeah, so they're not coming up. And the adhesive, you talked a lot about yesterday, you were explaining that, the difference between adhesives and costs. There's no two adhesives are created equal. The adhesives that we use was specially created and designed for this exact application. Yeah. It's specifically made for what we're using it for. It's yeah. not, and, and every adhesive that we use in any application, it, it's, it's specifically designed, engineered, created by the maker of the adhesives for that particular task. There's no universal adhesive. So we have several different kinds here, each dedicated for each particular application. So for bonding the fiberglass that you guys use to this, what mm -hmm. what's what's the rating, like the strength you were saying? 3,200 pounds per square inch. Okay. Yes, is its uh, strength rate, yeah. which far exceeds any fastener. Yeah, so. that's incredible. And it's continuous. So we, we do our studs every 16 inch or less sun center um, on, everything yeah so that we get more surfaces to bond to yeah. and to get a flatter truer straighter wall so what happens if have you ever had to remove the fiberglass off of one of these you really can't it's i mean i haven't had to yeah. um and i don't want to because, because i don't much. think it's coming off um, <laughs> yeah. the 
the, in all of our testing, we've had the, ma the manufacturer of the adhesives here, and in our testing that we did before launch was we would bond our pieces together and let it fully cure and then try to separate it. And then 100% of the time, the materials would fail before the adhesive would fail. Okay. So if I glued a piece of wood to this with that adhesive, the wood's gonna tear apart Yeah. before the adhesive fails. It, it, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's very, yeah, so. It's very effective. It's used by, again, our high-end million, two million, three million dollar motor coaches. Motor coaches primarily are the, are the users of this exact adhesive. We use it because of our wall construction, the methods that we use, and we wanted something that was the top quality. Yeah, so it doesn't, you can't just pull it apart. Yeah. That's, and you said like the cost of that adhesive versus a lower end. It's significant. That's where corners are cut by other manufacturers. It yeah. is, is a simple place to cut corners is adhesive. Yeah. And, but it can also be the most detrimental to- uh, The integrity of the vehicle, yeah, right? You know, yeah, we don't cut any corners with the adhesives. Use the the correct adhesive, irregardless of what it costs. Yeah, the barrel of he adhesive you were talking, you were saying it's almost. It's about twelve hundred dollars just for one cylinder. That's for one type of adhesive that we use in one application, and we've got yeah twenty different kinds of adhesives. Yeah, that's really. crazy. Do you want to compare the competitors' FRP to our exterior glass? That's FRP. This right here. So this is what every RV. This is actually a top quality FRP. This is top. This is top shelf FRP. Okay. So this, isn't that sad? <laughs> yes. Isn't that sad? Look this at that. This is top shelf. Wait, wait, let's try it. Let's see if we can, uh, here's, a, here's a credit card. Can I borrow that? Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. And this, Almost is, this is probably your thickest, best FRP. Um, FRP. And this is. The, the funny thing about this, my understanding is you just use this to cover your roof, yes. just for the top. It's just a layer, a protective layer. The only reason we use this is is for UV protection and looks. So yeah. it's essentially cosmetic. A yeah. roof core structure substrate does not need it. Yeah. But we just wanted to ensure that we got the UV stability more than anything and provide a really nice look. Yeah. So we use this. That's on, the only on the application roof. we use FRP. This is your top of the line FRP that you'll see, find on a actual, like a any other fifth wheel, any other camper. Yeah. Yeah, and this is walls. This is what this is using. what they use it on their walls. We use it as a decorative piece on our roof. On the roof, just yeah. to cover your, because yeah. you're using the the high density, fully waterproof PET core PET. composite substrate, which, that, which is the stuff that we were talking about that they use in trains, trains for yeah. the high traffic. Yeah. So this is just to cover it and give it some better UV protection. Yes. Yep. That's amazing. So this is what the, what you're talking about is they'll laminate this to a so glue small that to a real thin piece of plywood. Yeah. And then glue that to to the, the frame. wall. And then yeah. yeah. And that's why you see it delaminating so much is yeah. because it's just there's not a lot of. Well, they're relying entirely on that adhesive in that application and yeah, so thin and subject to to expansion and contraction. That's crazy. Because it is plastic. There's fiberglass in it, but it's... It's a plastic. It's plastic. Fiberglass reinforced plastic. So it's basically plastic with fibers in it. Yeah. And then that's it. So plastics expand and contract. Yeah. So that's, that leads to delamination. Okay. So the expansion contraction coupled with moisture. So our wall, this is a side wall. Not too heavy too, huh? Oh, so it's very light. Oh yeah. Light, but... Heavier than you'll find in most coaches, and for strength. Because it's bigger, it's, it's uh, thicker. 0, 6, 2, so and we've thicker. got a lot of studs. Is like it I common said, to have that many studs in most? Not in a travel trailer. Not in a travel trailer? No. Okay. Standard in a travel trailer, at best you'll see two feet on center. Okay. Your motor homes, in any, any motor homes you'll see 16 on center. Okay. Or real high end fifth wheels. Typical laminated wall. Yeah. They get rid of a lot of the studs. Because the cost and weight. Because they're trying to, that's like the ultra light trailers yeah. out there. Ultra light, ultra, ultra fast cheap. to build, ultra cheap to build. Yeah, because if you're cutting out stuff, exactly. every 24 inches on center, that's almost like, yeah, that's so quite a bit. you almost have twice the amount of metal in this yeah. wall. Yep, so and that's gonna give you a much stronger trailer yeah. and give us a flatter wall inside and out. There you go. Nice. It'll give us a much stronger trailer and flatter wall inside and out. Yeah. Well, that, and that makes sense is because some trailers, 
That's one of the things that I noticed is you have a really straight wall. Yeah. And some trailers you can almost brand new out. You can see the waves, waves right? And that all has to come comes back down to the substrate, the, yeah. the structure within the wall. And yeah. that's what we're looking at here. That makes is, sense. And that's what gets us the flat wall. So the the frame, and then and it looks like you've welded all the way across. Yep. Opposed to tack welding, which is exactly. Cool. Yeah, that looks nice. So and now you can the, see all the holes are prepped and ready for the bolts. Oh yeah. To the chassis. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, actually, the we got. Then we'll also bolt it to the to the roof. Okay, you bolt it. Yeah, you yep. bolt it. So you lag to the roof about lag to six the roof, inches. and then there's yeah. adhesive there. How thick is the roof again? At the top. At the thickest six and a half inches. Six and a half inches. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. So I want to see the chassis. You bring in some. So this is our frame. So you have these custom made for you. Yes, guys. we we do these off site. We um, our frame fabrication is not done here. And as you can see, two by six steel tubing. The main tongue is three by six. Okay. But it's all quite heavy duty. The unique thing about these chassis is it's a perimeter frame. Meaning your typical trailer chassis will have its two main runners held within, you know, set in, and they'll run front to back. And there really isn't any rigidity on the outside. On the outside. Oh so yeah, they usually overhang it, right? They overhang the, the floor cantilever past the mainframe. That's what the wall's set on. And then it might be little, you look underneath a standard trailer and it might have little gussets holding out the edge. That's but in an, if you think about it, in an off-road scenario, and if you were to hit something here on a normal yeah. trailer, you're, you're hitting that wall. You're, you're actually hitting the wall. And those walls are- An overhang. You know, not very strong. And it, it's catastrophic damage. Yeah, that you makes know? sense. I've never even thought of that. Because you, essentially the structure is going to be set in almost a foot or so. Yeah. That's where your frame is and everything out. It's really just the floor because and then the like, wall sitting on. So that's why sometimes you'll see oh, that's trailers a few years old going down the highway and it's real wavy. You know, the, the yeah. roof line, it's saggy. It's, it's saggy. It's because... Especially if you get water damage and then the wood absolutely. rots. Get you're essentially the part that's hanging over is just wood. It, exactly. Oh, wow, that's, that's fascinating. I never, I actually hadn't thought and so, that. And well, then it's and then all, like, this method, it's just, you know, it's, so it's strong all the way around the perimeter. It's very unique and not executed at all in the RV world. Um, yeah. And so for this application with the off-road characteristics, you can, you can jack. We've had a customer ask, where can I jack on the trailer? Jack, like, anywhere up. you want. Anywhere along the whole thing. Anywhere the you want. If, you know, they come with the high lift jack. You can use that anywhere you want yeah that makes sense you you know there's you can jack anywhere you want there's any that's so rubbing nice. up against rocks things like that well we've dragged it dragged it over <laughs> <things>. <laughs> yeah. we dragged it over yeah. and, this, and it didn't do anything it was just like i guess you could just touch it up right well you might scrape some of the paint off you can touch that up and good as new and it's so fascinating because yeah. i'm so it's, a, it's 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 structural every piece on the chassis is structural yeah none of it is non-structural. Again, with that one piece floor, we're able to, you know, put our cross members, put our supports that best suit the design, best suit the trailer and not have to worry about seams of the trailer, you know, seams. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in the sheeting or whatnot. So, so everything's in a specific place for a specific reason to optimize the strength. I'm having like a moment of like, aha, because mm -hmm. I've never realized. I'm imagining like the wall and the roof of every trailer is actually supported by a a cantilever yeah, or piece of plywood exactly essentially like yep. the whole trailer is sitting on the outside i'm thinking because my dad builds houses right and uh, it's essentially like a bay window in an old house where it pops out and hangs right yep. but the whole trailer is wrapped around like that and their walls and roof is all supported out on that hanging piece of and if, yeah if you hit that well and i'm i'm sitting there i've seen some trailers doing like rock guards and they put like they put a piece little of metal, metal trim tube, along or a tube trim. and i'm like but it's that's not really that. doing anything kind of like running boards on your pickup truck it's like a they look board, cool yeah. but how many times do you see people they got that smashed and folded oh. and bent it's not heavy duty it's not engineered for that really yeah I and this is the full perimeter every part of it as you can see so these are these are actually custom built because we've had some people think like that you are converting or buying these sure. as a, a trailer or a cargo trailer and that's not this is custom built custom, for your they're, frame they're they're tailored to this design this 
they, each model has its own chassis. Yeah, that's yep. cool. And this V part up here is where the, the nose is at the front. Where, Correct. Yep. And it's going to be super aero. We're just maximizing every square inch possible yeah. uh, floor space and creating some aerodynamics. Yeah, and you're going to get um, better turn radius with this type of tongue, yes, too. Yep. So. so you think, oh, ice, smooth, opposite. An ice road across the lake is some of the roughest terrain on the planet. Yeah. People don't realize that a, a lake doesn't freeze nice and level like the movies and you go ice skating across the whole thing. It can be the roughest train there is. Okay. It's common at a destination that I frequent a lot. It's 20 plus miles on the ice of driving in a vehicle. Yeah. Max speed, five miles an hour. Yeah. Because it's so rough. If you go any faster, you're going to rattle the teeth right out of your head. Yeah. So we've been building overbuilt, over-engineered trailers since day one for many years because even though we're not driving up in the mountains, the same design, the same geometry, the same rules that we've applied in, the, in, the, in our previous ventures with the fish house constructions, we apply here. And so that's yeah. kind of where we learned all of that. And so we're just adapting the same concepts more for more geared toward an off-road application. Yeah, so. that's really cool. So that's something unique with our trailers. So, so our, our tie downs, our recovery points, will have D-rings that we'll install here. They are, as you can see, which is hard to see when the trailer is completed. Yeah. It's a one piece, three quarter inch thick steel laser cut to conform to the shape of this rear bumper tied in. And this is a heavy wall tube. Yeah. Even though it's only three inches tall, it's, a, it's thicker than the rest of this. Okay. And that ties into there. And so these recovery points truly are yeah, a recovery true. point. It's not decoration. If you really need to pull your trailer and the truck, the okay. whole rig out of a hole or something, you could hook the hook to here and pull, and you're not going to damage the, the yeah, trailer. Yeah, yeah. Just from just from hitting this to this, you can yeah, tell this, this is, is a heavy thicker. wall. Yeah. And then we got this integrated skid plate here, and this is kind of to protect the receiver tube that we have on the back. And this here is for accessories, you know, bike rack, cargo basket. Who knows what what the what you may. So when the the guys that are building this frame for you are, they're telling you. So yeah, we've yet to been able to break it. And a thousand pounds is what we've been put on it. To be honest, we haven't found an accessory that can hold more than this. You know, so your basket or your bike rack is gonna fail before this will. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. The only thing we have not done, because most states don't allow, is pulling double other towing? trailers. Not designed yeah. for a double tow. There's I wouldn't. No, there's no wiring provisions here for, yeah. for plugging lights and things like that. And it's. The trailer is not balanced to do that. It's not designed for that. Yeah, that makes Less sense. Less to do with strength, more to do with the balance of the trailer. Yeah, in Utah, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, yep. and I, I always tell people, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I always tell people, don't do it. It's not, it's not the best thing to do. Period. Right. Especially if you're, if you purposely designed it not to be balanced for that. But, but over that, that's crazy. Thousand pounds on that thing. So, we'll, we'll try to get some gold bricks and see if we can weigh it over. A, <laughs> That will be our next video. How much, how much gold can we put? There you got go. any gold? No, yeah, first you, you got to find some gold. <laughs> you got, we got to go find, we got to go find 2,000 pounds of gold. To there you go. Mod. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go to the bank and borrow it, you know, for the day. <laughs> just for the day. I don't think people really realize that this is, this is the real. Yeah. A lot of them you see are quite fake. They, they so look, they look we, pretty. We took some time in designing that and we tested the heck out of that. Hmm. There you so go. So you got a 30 ton press there that also pulls. Oh wow. And so we're times. able to hook things up and pull it apart. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Got it. Got a trailer? So they, they come out and they'll, we'll bring them all out and then we bring them back in to detail them. Oh really? And so we, we do a, a round of testing so the guys test them all. Yeah. On the assembly line and there's, there's some good reasons for that rather than a separate testing and quality control person. Yeah. I'll have them do it themselves, so then yeah. they can find, oh man, I, you know, kind of yeah. check each other's work. And then we'll get going on this next batch, and then we'll bring them in back one or two at a time, and then we'll start detailing them. Okay. So, and then that's like the third and fourth set of eyes on everything. Yeah. Miss this, miss that, adjust this, adjust that. Yeah, okay. So, so the things that we do miss, it got by a lot of eyes you know what I mean yeah yeah you so get, you sometimes it's like really how do we miss that yeah you know yeah 
it's kind of a it's like a it's like you were saying that it's kind of a rare when you miss something it's like it's a surprise it's a I surprise mean, it should be you. a surprise i want it to be a surprise every time there's something that fails i want to be like what no way well, yeah. it's not because we think we're perfect because we we try to have all the steps in place to prevent to not miss to really things. not miss thing not make any you know we like, over engineered yeah well yeah. it's like our some of our trailers that you know not your trailers that have been coming in some of our other trailers come in and they come in with problems and it's just like yeah. they're not checking things so we kind of feel like we're the final check for and the manufacturer that is the again back to the industry standards yeah um, that is the standard i know you know firsthand that that's probably a requirement of the dealers to be that next set of eyes. Mm. Well, Steve, you tell us a little bit about your background since he's pointing at you. <laughs> where, do, where have you worked and what have you done? So I've been a, so I was a supplier to the industry for about 20 years. 20 years <clears throat> to, to who some of To all the Forest Rivers and all the Thors and pretty much in Northern Indiana. Okay. And then, um, so it enabled me to see a lot of the production practices that they used at many different plants. And many of them, every one of them does it a little bit differently. Yeah. But nobody does it to the caliber we do it here. Um, after that, I went into, um, I actually went to work for one of the Forest River divisions and did sales on the on the road with those guys and just kind of realized that it wasn't the right fit for me. So. Yeah. And Isaac and I had been working together for about 10 years prior to that as I was one of his suppliers. and. He kept telling me, he says, I'm going to build a real trailer. I'm going to build a real trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and finally I said, let's build that real trailer. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm ready. All right. That's awesome. That's cool. Well, we're excited. I mean, you are you obviously got a hold of me the first time, and that, that was my first contact with you guys. And I don't know. To me, I feel like life and business is about relationships. It's not just about transactions, right? <laughs> and that's why Michael and I flew out to meet you guys the first time. It's because we're like... If I'm going to sell this stuff, I want to like know something about it. Like not just like, and, and the person, people making it too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to like get to know the people I want to engage with them. And, and to me, it's like life is more fun that way. It's more enjoyable than just like transactions. Right. So, but we also want to make good things. Wow. That sounds pretty pretty cool. cool. Lots of little detail work, but once the wall's gone, I mean, it goes so fast. Yeah. I mean, the walls go on, the roofs go on in a matter on all four trailers in, in like an hour. Uh, tomorrow, it'll go from not looking like anything to a lot of something really quick. 